Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to use Kind, Superbase RLS, and Next.js app router. So I've just gone and created an application in Kind, a backend Next.js app, and I've just followed the quick start using a starter kit. So I've cloned the repository, npm installed, I've set up my local environment variables inside there, and then I've got it running on localhost 3000, and I can show you that the sign in and sign up all works. Cool, and I'm logged in. So this bit down here is actually the setup for Superbase. So I've done the Superbase and Next.js setup, and you can find that if you go to your Superbase project. I think it's just under Home, and if you click Connect, you can check App frame Frameworks, Next.js, App Router, Superbase. Put in these environment variables into your environment variables here, like I've done over there. And all I've done is I've grabbed this server file, utils superbase server, and I've copied it and pasted it into my code. And it's over here. So I've commented some things out, but that's for later. So basically what I have is a table called to-dos with RLS disabled. And I've added one row has a user with an ID that matches one of the users on kind. So if I check out my users list, let's copy this text and I search. Yeah, so there's my test super base user that I've added and I've given it a task, my first task. So now when I visit my website, I'm actually rendering out that task. You can see it says my first task and it belongs to this current user. So how did I do that? Well, I used this create client function on this page, my dashboard page. So I've done const superbase equals to await create client. And I've set the cookie store inside of the function rather than passing it through. Then on line number five, I'm grabbing the data from superbase. So superbase from my table to do's, I'm selecting all. And then I'm just json.stringifying that data and making it pop up on the page down here. Uh, now I'm going to show you the special stuff to get kind working with Superbase RLS. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get RLS, row level security with Superbase, working with kind. Alright, so this is the use case. So if I'm logged in, I only want to see the to-dos that are related to me. And the way that I know that the to-do is related to me is if the user matches my kind ID when I get logged in. Okay, so Peter Fanavong is not this user, does not have the same user ID, so I should not be able to see his to-do. I have to be logged in with that person's account to see his to-do, if that makes sense. And that's what row-level security can do on Superbase. So if I turn it on, great, and I refresh this, I shouldn't be able to see it because this is not mine. Oh, great. So that's working. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a to-do with the user ID of the user that I'm currently logged in with. So I'm logged in with peter at kind.com. So this user, I'm going to copy this user ID and add it in. So insert a row, leave that. So the user is the current logged in guy. So this is for peter at kind.com only. Give that a save. All right, so if row level security is working properly, I should be able to see it, but I can't. All right, so we need to do a little bit of extra work to get the kind ID to match up with that column here, with this user column in my to-dos table. All right, so how are we going to do that? The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to send this user's um, ID through to Superbase so that it can actually access it, and then it's gonna check it against what exists in this table. All right, so that to do that, in our server file, we're actually gonna get that user's ID by using get kind server session, get ID token, 
and we have to send that ID token through on the request. So in order to do that, we do inside of the options object. So above the cookies bit, we're going to add global headers authorization bearer and pass through the ID token. Now this ID token, it needs to be signed so that Superbase can actually read it. So the way that we sign it is we can use JSON web token and we just need to grab the secret from Superbase. So if I go to Superbase, I believe it's in project settings, API. This JWT secret, you can use to decode your JWTs, but you can also use it to mint our own. And that's what we're gonna be doing. So let's reveal it. I'm gonna copy it. And I'm going to put it in my environment variables. So let's call it next public superbase JWT secret. And I'll paste that in. Save. All right, so now let's sign this ID token and then we can pass it to Superbase and then Superbase will be able to grab the data. Cool, so all we have to do here is import JWT from JSON Web Token. I have a red squiggly line because JSON Web Token doesn't come with types. So let's just install the types. Let's go const token equals to JWT dot sign we're going to sign the ID token and we're going to pass in the next public superbase JWT secret and then inside of our bearer we're going to pass through that token all right so now superbase should be able to grab that token from the request what we're going to do is we are going to add a bit to the authentication bit so if we go under policies now Row level security is enabled, but no policies are set. So that's why it's always giving an empty array. So we have to create a policy. Let's do it on select, which is what we're doing. Let's call this test. And we have to provide an SQL expression for this statement. So basically we need to say um, for this table to do's, what is required for me to select from it? And for us, what's required is we need to make sure that that user column matches the ID from the request that we're sending through. So I'm going to just print out this ID token for you guys. So you can see. So if you have a look at our ID token, inside of it, it has all of this information. But what's really important is this sub bit. So you can see this KP, that's our kind ID. We need this kind ID to match up with the user in the to-dos table. And that's the only way we're gonna allow a select. So in order to do that, I've just had to reference our kind with Superbase blog. So in this get user ID function, there's this null if current setting request JWT claims true sub blah, blah, blah. So what it's doing here is it's grabbing the request from the JSON web token, grabbing the claims, and we're going straight to grab that sub. So that sub is this sub here. So we're checking that this value is equal to the todos.user value. So if I save this policy, what this row level security policy is doing is it's checking any request that's coming through and it's making sure that we're only allowing people to select from this table if they have that correct sub, that correct kind ID that matches the user in the table. All right, so now I should actually be able to see my to-dos. So if I refresh, kaboom, you can see it. And I can only see one of the to-dos, right? So even though I have two to-dos, do, two to -dos, that exist in this table. I can only see the one where the user ID matches up with the current user that's actually logged in. And you can see it's for peter at kind.com only. Cool, so I can actually insert another one. Let's go 
for Peter at kind. And let's make sure I pop in his email or uh, his user ID. Just to confirm that it's working. And if I refresh here, great, I can see both of them. And I can't see that random one. I'll double I'll do it again, but I'll put the wrong user ID. So I'm just gonna put two instead of one. Random. Click save. Refresh, and you can see that's not popping up. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Hopefully that made sense to you guys.